Bill was a truck driver before his retirement and enjoyed singing, cooking, and catering, especially weddings and some funerals. Bill left his service on the earth and went to his real home in heaven to be with his Heavenly Father on Monday, August 17th, 2020, at 12.15 p.m. William, we will all miss you and your smile. And dot, 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 to be continued in heaven. And now this is what I wrote. Uh, our beloved Bill was a huge, inspiring, uplifting blessing to Living Word Church. Individually to each of us and to the community also. You know, he had a very generous love and a non-stop smile. Friendliness, actually his friendliness drew people to Bill. But of course, you know what it really was? It was the prominence of the presence of the Lord Amen. in his life. Amen. That draws people like a magnet because we all have a spirit that wants God. Amen. He so enjoyed talking to people. I remember when he went to the YMCA in the stores, ministering to the sick at the hospitals, which they did. That was something that Bill and Sarah also did for me. Um, and in the nursing homes and at church and giving rides to those without transportation. I remember that. Many people, they went and brought to Omaha or to the airport. Bill always had wonder, wonderful, adventurous stories to tell. <laughs> <laughs> he really did. Which had life lessons and wisdom that would help them now and in the future. And you know, Bill loved his church family. Yes, he did. And he was always there for all of us. Yes, he was. At Christmas, in his generosity, he would buy out the town, <laughs> wherever, whatever store carried these, uh, uh, the, the big tins of popcorn with the Christmas <laughs> decor on it. Yeah, we kept them. <laughs> um, and he would buy one for each of the families in our church. <laughs> So, so precious. Uh, he really affected us and many others in a positive way. What that, it was, he was always uplifting. I just remember that so much, how I'd be down and he would uplift me. <laughs> um, and he caused one to see the goodness of God in your life. Instead of the negative, <laughs> and looking, looking at the bright side of life with Jesus. What an awesome witness for God he was, always smiling and showing God's love. Truly the joy of the Lord was his strength. Bill was very active at, at his church in Connecticut and also here at Living Word, where he served as a deacon in the Ministry of Helps, actually at both. Um, he helped us with the food bank, which we had once a month. He was always there present and he would be ministering to the people and talking to them and loving on them. He regularly and diligently attended our prayer meetings, <laughs> which we had for twice a week and we've done for years. Originally, we had a prayer meeting um, at the church. We had the church down by the airport and uh, we moved here in 2006. And um, we decided that we were gonna pray for the city of Fremont I think it was five to six days a week. Uh, and we did every single night. And he, he came over, and that's how we met him. And he stuck. <laughs> and when we had the prayer meetings, which we still do here, twice a week, and Tuesdays and Fridays, uh, he, he always came. Always came. You know what? He was there, whether it was snowing and icy, or below zero weather, or hot or sunny. And I, he really actually attended even a few days before he entered the nursing home. He did. I can remember he would come with his walker and, you know, we'd all try to help him in, especially in the winter time. But he, he was just such a blessing Amen. at that prayer meeting. But uh, Bill was truly a Christian in action. And he valued his relationship with the Lord. You know, the one lesson he desired and taught the next generation and he often quoted to others was, give your heart to the Lord and go to church. Give your heart to the Lord and go to church. 
And you know, he also said this with it. He said, everything else in your life is secondary. And it really is. His wife, Sarah, told me the very last time Bill witnessed, it was to his doctor. And I think when he, when he came out of the anesthetic, or was it just, yes, when he came out, and he, <laughs> he used the verse, John 8, 36, whom the Son of God makes free is free indeed. Amen. And he just looked at it and he said that. You know, Bill for Christ on this earth, but now he's in a place of glory and of peace and full of the joy of the Lord. And we can all imagine this right now. He's standing upright. Yes, he is. With no pain and no sorrow. Amen. You know, so often we say, well, I'm sorry for your loss. But you know, the Bible says in Philippians 1, 21, it says, for my life, this is out of the voice translation. Maybe most of you haven't heard that, but there is, it, it was the best translation. We looked it up in several. In fact, Tony Anderson gave me these. Uh, for my life is about the anointed one and him alone. And my death, when that comes, will mean great gain for me. Amen. 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 In the King James Version, it says, For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Amen. It's the truth. Um, I know he's walking on streets of gold, singing with the angels, singing with his, those who have gone up before him and other saints of God. You know, one of, Sarah told me this, one of Bill's favorite psalms was uh, Psalm 34, which I'm now going to read out of um, the King James Version, verses 1 through 8. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be continually be in my mouth. That's for all of us. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. You know, that's calling us all to do it. Yes. And let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps round about them that fear him and delivers him. That's a good one to say when, you're, when it's icy outside you're going home. and when you're going home and, and walk. That's right. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Oh, taste and see. He is. He is the best dessert you could ever have. Okay, now right now we're going to have a slideshow of uh, some pictures of him and uh, there's a song being sung in the background, and guess who it is? It's Bill Cross. <laughs> Brother Bill. Amen.
God's gift of time. We all need a time to grieve, quiet time for reflection, to sift through memories and come to grips with what has happened. And this is from Pastor Daisy Zimmerman at Pentecostal Assembly Church. Connecticut. With deepest sympathy, his compassion, his grace, his love. This is from Helen, Helen Moore. From California. At a time when words are hard to find, but love and care are deeply felt. This is from Sister Lucy Warren and family, Connecticut. Wishing you, wishing you peace in God's promise. Love the Pittmans. Thinking of you with care, sympathy, and your loss. Love, Dana and Susan. That's Connecticut. With deepest sympathy, Steve and Sally Hansen and family. Remembering their beautiful song in sympathy and prayer, brother Charlie and sister Annie Eason, Connecticut. Even when we know that someone we love has gone to a better place, Goodbye is always the hardest thing to say. Love Ken and Debbie Berenick. Berenick. I'm sorry if I said it wrong. With, with sympathy. Sending love and comfort. With sincere sympathy, Ferba Johnson, Connecticut. Hope you feel the circle of love around you. Our most sincere sympathies, Rob and Barb Gangler. And family. Strength, hope, with sympathy, your friends and neighbors, Neil and Cindy Burns. And with sympathy, may it help to know that thoughts of deepest sympathy are with you during this time. And this is from Nye Point, which is a nursing home that took care of them. Thank you all. Thank you for everything you've done, all the food, all the cars, all this the comfort, the prayers, the love for my parents, I mean, coming here to Nebraska on their own, and all the love that they have, that you have shown. So this is coming from our family, all 10 of us and family. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. We do appreciate it, because we had no idea, you know, Nebraska. Everyone said, you're going to Nebraska, what does that mean? My mom said, they were led, they were led, and as we can see, all of the siblings, they were led, as we see. Yeah. So thank you, thank you, church, thank you, friends, thank you, everyone who has opened up their arms, their hearts, their homes, their love to them. First, I come to you as a minister, and second, as a friend. It is truly a great honor to stand here before you and tell you about your father. Your father was a boaster and a brat that he knew the Lord and he wanted all of us to know the Lord. He would boast and brat to each and every one to shout out that he knows the Lord and he wants you to have the same thing. But you know, that is one of the greatest things. I was telling Pastor that one of the greatest things that I figured out in this journey that he left with me is about my oddity 
of his life. His life was written. His autobiography was written because the servant that he is that yeah. came to the Lord. That's yeah. why he was chosen to be with the king. There's another, another greater honor it is to be with the king. Amen. You don't understand in front of him. I'm not going to preach. I'm just going to tell you. It's a great honor to be with the king. At, at this time of moment of your life when we feel hurt and sorrow and sad that we will miss, we have to turn that around and be joyful that he is with the king. And that's one thing that I will take from him is to boast and brag about Jesus Christ. Amen.
But you know what? Nobody's ever touched him. Because Marco knocked the tundra out of him. <laughs> but I'm telling you what. There's too much of this stuff. Kids living together. Or couples living together. You better read the Bible, what it says about adultery. And that's why I'm so proud. My two back there, and the other three, other four, they'll never have any problem. And I know Sarah, who's God, and Bill were an example, big time example. And I just thank God I got to know them. Amen. I really do. Amen. You know, when you see people that you don't have to walk on eggshells around, it's fun to be around. And Sarah, she never talked about people, and neither did Bill. I'm telling you what, family, this is where you want to look at, right here. This is what Pastor Jack and I are doing in this church right now. We don't talk about people. We pray for them. We wash them with the Word of God. If you have dirt on your clothes, you wash them with the, with the Word. What, remember the, 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 the church that we used to have, shout? Remember? That's what we do, shout the Word. We shout at the people. To set them free. Because there's so many things that are going on out here right now encouraging children to do the wrong. But how about parents? I, I blame the parents, I'll tell you that. That's who I blame. Because those children, and it, it, those children, I'll tell you, if you raise your children like these two here, they'll be able to raise people from the dead because they have none of this religious stuff in them. They have no hate in them. Yes. Think about a church. Do children worry about them? These two, do they worry about anybody? No. No. They're kind of free. That's the way we've got to do it. And when you read the Word of God, see, John 8, 31 and 32, if you continue my word, your sight will be the truth. The Word will make you free. And then John 15, 7, if you abide in Him, not part from Him, abide in Him, and, and, you, and His words are in you. That's why we're a living Word. We live the Word in His church. Don't we, Sarah? Tell you what you have, anything you want. This whole thing, what's going on right now, wait, when the revival comes, you're going to see things you've never seen before. But be ready, church. I'm just going to say this. It says in 1 John 3, 3, purify yourself as he is pure. There's no sin up in heaven. And that's why we're getting rid of it down here on earth. Because when he comes, he's only coming halfway. He doesn't want to come. We're not ready yet. But when you come, it says Hebrews 10, 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves as some do is exalt. See that time coming. Because when you come to church, you're getting the yokes taken off your shoulders by the word of God that the devil has put on you. Isaiah 10, 27. You know, Bill ran a good race. He kept the course and he kept the faith. That's what he did. That's why he put a, he had, I mean, he had a smile like, you know, he looked up at me. <laughs> oh, Bill, you can't, you smile all the time. And I said, I want that. <laughs> you know, the joy of the Lord, you're straight, you know. But I'm going to tell you what, church, he's coming down halfway. I'm going back again. If you're in sin, you, you can't go. Because he doesn't want to blow you up. Because he's only coming down halfway. Because when you're ready, that's why we're getting ready for him to come. We're getting the revival. We're going to make a, just like uh, John the Baptist made a way for, for Jesus. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Amen. But you know what? They're saying there's a remnant out there. Amen. Get in there, church. I'll tell you. Amen. I could tell you a bunch of what's going to happen in the tribulation. You don't want a bug to go through what's tribulation because you can see right now. But see, the church is keeping the Antichrist from coming. Amen. But we've got to take our place. And I know she's pointing at her watch. And I'm going to quit. I'm going to tell you what, church, it's time. It's time. It's time to be like this, right here. Right here. An example. Praise God. Does anyone else want to preach? Amen. Bill cheated me. He told me that we were going to walk in this church together. <laughs> strong and straight. Well, I'm going to get back at him when I come to heaven. <laughs> I'm going to dance with him. Yes. Amen. Amen. I love you, Bill. Amen. I'm not 
sure what year it was, but it was about five or six years ago. Uh, William and I took a trip to, uh, to a revival service in uh, Lakeland, Florida. And it wasn't just about the revival, it was about him and I getting to know each other. Mm -hmm. And there was no color. He, he's my brother in Christ. Uh, he's my best friend. I love him, but I know that he's watching right now. Yeah. He's tuned in. Yeah, sure. Total witnesses are watching, and my mom just yeah. went, just before he did, and they're together up there. Amen. They were they best friends too, and I know there's been there's been a a, a family union up there. Yeah. And they're watching right now. Amen. And all the other ones have gone home, and your family watching right now. Yeah. Tuned in to cloud witnesses. Yeah. It was a privilege to know him. Amen. And he changed my life. He helped change my life. There was no prejudice, no nothing. We loved each other. Amen. And I value that time with him. And he always come and he always had a smile on his face. No matter what was going on in his life, even when he was, couldn't walk very well, he always had a smile on his face. Amen. He didn't think about himself. No. He thought about it, about other people, and then this flower my sister made. There's a candle light, light uh, flickering in it. My sister Sandy's back there. That candle represents he was a light wherever he went. Amen. Amen. And he was, he was a light. And I know that Cooper can say that too. When he went to Baker's, he was a light there. Amen. When he went to Walmart, he was a light. Amen. Remember where he went, he was a light. Amen. So is Sarah. I remember that Jesus walked through two dark places and it was dark. And when he walked through, light came. And wherever William went, light came. Amen. 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 Hey there. I want to know, I want you to raise your hand, how many people have a telephone here? A telephone. Okay. Do you know your number? Okay. Do you know God's telephone number? Does anybody know God's telephone number? Yes. Okay. Brother Bill knew God's telephone number. It's Jeremiah 33.3. Call me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things, hidden and mysterious. And these two know God. They knew him. You have to have an intimate relationship with him. And you will fly high, and he's dancing on streets of gold now, praising the Lord and singing. Amen. Mighty, mighty man of God. Hallelujah. We only knew Bill for about eight years, but he made such an impact on our lives. My husband and I and our two kids, we moved over from England in 2012, and that first winter... Um, well, Ian didn't have any boots, and Bill must have noticed, and Sarah must have noticed, we never forgot. He just came to church, and he just gave, you know, how he got the right size, I don't know, but he just gave those boots to, to Ian as a gift on that, and that just meant so much to us, and our kids, they were 14 and 16 at the time, they absolutely loved Bill and Sarah, and loved, always made a big line for them when they went to, when they came here, and Bill never forgot Megan and Bryn, they, uh, Bryn's in the military in Germany, he always prayed for Bryn, and Megan was here sometimes, sometimes not, and then in California, and he always prayed for Megan, and he always asked after Megan and Bryn, and he was such a prayer warrior, and oh, just loved Bill so much, he had a twinkle in his eye, he had a good sense of humour, and once he started giggling, it set us all off. Oh, yeah. Amen. 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 And we're just very blessed and privileged to know to know Bill. Amen. 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 I want to say something. <laughs> um, I knew Brother Bill since high school, so you know, not too long, but but I any the one thing, if I could say one thing about his life. It would be that he was always looking for somewhere to give. Yes. I, I mean, I can't tell you how many times. Oh, how many people are in the prayer group? I want him to give all of them a gift. <laughs> oh, oh, how many families do we have in the church? You know, the pastor was saying earlier, the popcorn. 
Yeah. Have to give us popcorn every year. Uh, and it, it just, he was such a blessing Amen. to all of those that he arrived in. You, him and you both. Um, so. so I just, I really appreciate his life and his example Amen. to Amen. my family. so I could wake up from this dream, for you to shake your head and tell me things are not what they seem. Just one more glimpse of your smile, another story you always enjoy to tell. Just one more joke encouraging me that you are well. Am I sleeping or is this true? Is reality telling me I'm just missing you? Have I been lied to? Please tell me it's a dream. So when my mind comes clear, I can smile. No more frowns, just hearing you talk for more than a while. No more sickness, affliction, suffering, or death. Just one more conversation before you take your last breath. Maybe it's selfish. At this point, I will take that name. Life is a gift, but for me, it will not be the same. Wow. So just please uh, ignore that. But anyway, um, Bill, he dressed up like a king. Yeah, yeah. He dressed up, he had jewelry on, <laughs> just shoes and stuff. I mean, everything. He looked just like a king, like I said. And he always had a smile on his face, always. And I know when I would come into church, um, like some of you already said, He'd give you this huge hug, and it was such an embrace. You know, he, he gave you that hug, 
Um, you can tell he, you know, he loved you. And he made you feel very special. Um, I uh, love talking to Bill about uh, the recipes and food that he made. Um, and I was sitting with him and stuff. And we were talking and stuff. And my birthday came up. Um, and he says, well, what's your birthday? And so I told him my birthday was. And I didn't anticipate anything at all. And he came over and he went ahead and brought a whole chicken. A whole chicken with all those herbs and everything that he stuffs into the chicken. And then he went ahead and brought me this dessert with mandarin oranges just all over it. And it was the best chicken I've ever, ever had. But it made me feel so special. Your father was so special. And I love him. I love him so much. Um, but thank you so much for giving us this opportunity uh, to get to know your dad. Because he definitely meant a lot to me, and he was a great example. Amen. Bill and Sarah have always been really special to us. Um, from the first moment I met them, they just hugged me like they were family, and Bill always acted kind of like he was my grandpa. <laughs> um, and he never missed an opportunity to ask me how my parents were, and what they were doing, and what they were doing. He met, I think he only met them one time. He always wanted to know what they were doing and how they've been. Uh, since my dad passed away a couple years ago, he always asks about mom and how she's doing and tells me that he's been praying for her. And it's just really special to have somebody who cares that much. You know, and they always greet me with a kiss. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So sweet. Yeah. And just, they've just been so special to us. And uh, we're just happy that he's dancing in heaven and Amen. having a great time now. But um, we'll miss him here.
skinnier. <laughs> but he did it. And this is a man that told the truth. Yeah. And he enjoyed life. And we enjoyed him. And Sarah, <clears throat> we just want to know. said, um, you didn't have to know him well. My older kids didn't come to church here because they don't live here, but they were have been here a few times for special things. But when I told them Brother Bill had passed, they said, oh, he was such a nice guy. He always treated us so well when we were there. And, and they just, um, so you didn't have to know him. I mean, they were probably here three or four times, not, you know, a lot. So, you know, but, but they knew who he was, <laughs> you know, and he always, he just always made him felt so welcome and so, and he always asked about it. I mean, yeah, he did yeah, he always asked how my boys were doing, you know, and that, of course, the girls came more, so he knew them, and so Sarah taught a lot of the grandkids, and they, they all remember Sarah, <laughs> you know, whenever we talked about Sunday school and things that happened, they yeah. always talked about Sarah, you know, for Sunday school, so, but we just loved him. <laughs> Okay, it's, it's, we're going to sing a song, uh, We Shall Be Open.
to say that right now. You can be saved. Hallelujah. Just one last thing, and I know uh, without me <laughs> having a shaky voice, <laughs> I know Bill would want to give a salvation message. Uh, and you know, he knew that one of the most important decisions that he ever made in his life was to receive Jesus as his personal Lord and Savior. And that's a decision to turn from sin and yourself and to follow God every day and in every way and in every walk of life. You know, not, not just, okay, we give a salvation message. We want to be real. Yeah, amen. It, it needs to be real yeah. in your life. So many people make that decision, but then I don't see the realness in it. You know what? The, the decision to receive Christ and allow Him to guide your life, and if others don't know, it's, it's called being born again or being saved. And without that salvation experience, people are doomed to failure in life, in eternity, actually in hell. Um, in John 3.3, 3, in the Bible, Jesus said, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. Now, we were all born physically on the earth, but we have to be born spiritually also. Yes. And your body will die, but just like Bill did, pass on. But your spirit lives forever. Amen. Yeah. Your spirit, you are a spirit being. Every human being is a spirit being. And you will live forever. And in John 3, 16 and 17, Jesus said, For, um, for God the Father so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes or receives him should not perish but have everlasting life. And I always like to put verse 17 with it because it says, For God sent his son Jesus into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Unbeknownst to my, my parents didn't know any better, but they would always say, if I do something wrong, they'd say, God's going to punish you. They, they didn't know any better. Because at least they, they brought me to church from the time I was born. <laughs> And, and uh, when I was 39 years old, <laughs> on almost 40, I, I got born again. Um, went to church all the time. Could go to church every day. And we were very, very, very good church goers. But no one ever told me that you had to ask Jesus to receive him into your heart. Um, I just want to say, success now and eternal life in heaven belong to believers in Christ. And, and you know, when, when you really live the life, you, you, your, your life turns more successful in many, many areas. So we're not talking about joining a church. We're not talking about another religion. As Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe it in your heart, you will be saved. Right. And that, that's, and you have to believe that he was raised from the dead. So with your heart, it's a heart issue. It's not just words, words out there. With the heart, one believes, and with the mouth, you confess that you are saved. And like I said, I went to church all the time and no one ever told me. And I, I was thrilled. And you know, it, it was a totally different life. Our marriage was on the rocks at that time. Our children were going astray. And it changed the whole thing. Changed our marriage, changed our children. And here I wound up behind the pulpit. <laughs> always, always knew that there was more. And I know I'm a woman, and I've been persecuted in this town for it, but I've been doing this for 27 years. And, 
Um, that's right. I may not, I just, I don't care <laughs> about what anyone thinks of me in that respect because I know this is truth. You know, and in John 1 12, the, the Bible actually says that as many as receive him, as many people as welcome him in, welcome Jesus. He gave them the power and the right to become the sons of God. The sons and daughters of God. You know, there, there's that song, we're all children of God. No, we're not. We're not all children of God. That, that's a, um, yeah, we were all created by God. But you have to receive him as your Lord and Savior. And, and you know, it's the greatest love story ever told in the Bible. There is no greater love than when God the Father sent his son to die in our place for our sins. Um, sort of like he took the electric chair for us or he took the lethal dose for us. That's right. See, God is not waiting, though, to clean, for you to clean up your life because so you, you can be, uh, you can take him in. No, he, he no. He's the one that makes you holy. <laughs> He, he loves you just the way you are, but he doesn't want you to stay just the way you are. And so he, he's just waiting for you to ask him to come into your heart. You know what? So you can live a better life. But he will never force you. That's something he'll never do. Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hears my voice and opens that door, I'll come in and I'll eat and I'll sup with him. Well, you know, this, this is one thing. That doorknob <laughs> is in your heart. He said, if you'll, I'm standing at the door of your heart knocking and the door, doorknob, the, the place you turn it is inside and you're the one who has to turn it. Yeah. He, he's not going to force his way in of uh, that and, and have, you know, come in. He's not going to force that. And, you know, I, I always used to think of this verse, and, and it meant a lot to me, that, okay, here, here's, here is the difference I saw going to church for 39 years and being very active in church. I saw that I, all I did was know about God. But I didn't know God as my best friend. Okay, so I thought, come in and stop. Okay, we know about famous people, famous athletes, right? Yeah. right. Famous politicians, we yeah. know about them. But would you have, do you know them well enough to invite them to come over for supper? <laughs> or dinner, as however you call it? No, I, I don't think so. Right? Right. That's where it lies. I knew about it. I took catechism classes, things like that. So I knew about. But now I know him. He's my best friend. Trust him. When something happens, I mean, I go to him. I trust you, Lord, with all my heart. You know, we bought this church for six hundred fifty. I, I, I wasn't going to bring this up. <laughs> six hundred fifty thousand dollars. We have fifty people. <laughs> And, and we paid it off. Amen. It was paid off last year. We still have probably that amount of people. And I, I went, God, one day I came in here and I cried at the top of my voice. And I said, what have I done? How was I supposed to do that? But he kept leading me. I mean, the church we were in was the size of, you could put five of them in here. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the truth. And I, I thought, why are you leading me to that church? You know, and the real estate agents were, is this going to fly? Is this going to fly? Well, it did fly. <laughs> we paid it off in 12 years. And it's a miracle. But I, 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 how did I get into all that? He is real. That's, that's what I'm saying. That, maybe it was good that I didn't know him for all those years. Now, it's been 40 years. Yeah, I didn't figure that out. I'm 80 years old. But see, he's preserved me. So I can keep going on. Amen. So I can keep going and finish my race. And that's what he wants you to do. Amen. 
This is real. Yes. Yes. You know, and God's made it so simple. All we have to do is open the door of our hearts and welcome him. Yep. And he'll come and live in your spirit and he'll help you 24-7. <laughs> so, um, all you have to do is say it and meet it in your heart. And I know Sarah wanted me to get this also. But you know, he's saying to us today, and we're living in such, such a, a, a different time. When you lived as long as I have, and, and Bill had, and Sarah, and, uh, you've seen a lot of things. And you know, I know he, he's just, he's, he's, he's speaking in our hearts and saying, take me in, I'll help you. I'll help you with your problems. I'll help you with your addictions. I died for all and shed my blood so you could be with me in heaven forever. And all you have to do is ask and receive me and really want me. And I'll come. And he says, I'll make my abode. I'll make my, you know, I even went to the point, I'm going to tell you that I Googled abode just so I would get the right definition. <laughs> abode means I'll make my home with you. I loved you so much, and I laid down my life for you. And, and really, all you have to do is so simple to say a prayer. For a long time, we were in prison ministry, and I can remember um, we were preaching. We'd go into uh, Omaha Correctional Center, and uh, this guy was sitting by me, and he, and he said, what do I have to do to be saved? Do I have to take classes? And I said, no, 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 no. You know, when I took him out in the hallway and led him to the war. <laughs> Just like that. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say a prayer, and I'm, I'm just going to ask you to, for everyone to repeat it, if you would. And if you really mean it in your heart, you have to mean it in your heart and say it with your mouth. But it's not just words. So many people have said the words to get rid of people because they witnessed to them. But honestly, it's real. It's a real thing. And we need to live the real life and not be fake. That's right. I can tell you right now, I'm not fake. I mean it with all my heart, and I'm, I'll be bold enough to tell anyone. Because it changed our life. Tremendously. So if everyone would just maybe bow their head and just repeat this prayer. Just very simple. Dear God, Dear God I see my sins have separated me from you. And I repent of sin. Thank you that you loved me so much. That you sent your Son Jesus, to suffer and die on my behalf, so I could receive eternal life. I believe Jesus died for me and rose again, and I receive him as my Savior and Lord right now. Jesus, Jesus, I declare, I declare you, are my Lord, you are my Lord, and I'll live for you, and I'll live for you from, this day on. from this day on. And thank you, Father God, thank you, Father God for saving me. For saving me. Amen. 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 Okay, well, uh, I just thank you for every, everyone for sharing. It was wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. But uh, this service will continue at, at the Memorial Cemetery. And uh, because of restrictions, though, uh, please use discretion. Um, and following the, the gravesite service, there's going to be a luncheon at Living Word Church. Whoops, cut out. It's going to be here at Living Word Church for family and friends who feel comfortable participating. So but all are invited if you feel comfortable. Uh, participating in that much. So, uh, yeah.
You can join us at the graveside service or wait. You can start the music. This is one of Bill and Sarah's favorite songs. <laughs> also, that they sung at their church. <laughs> 